Hi everybody, my name is Joanne, and today we're going to learn how to set up our Omnet++ environment, create our own workspace, and then also learn how to run iNet and Vans. So as you can see here, I'm on a Windows environment, or Windows. So the installation setup that I'm going to be giving for this tutorial is for Windows. Uh, let me know in the comments if you would like directions for Linux. I do have some Linux machines so I can record. Um, I don't have any Mac OS's, which is also supported by Omnit++. So if you have a Mac, then you're going to have to read the directions on the installation. But otherwise, let's get started. So first things first, you're going to go to omnetpp.org and uh, you're going to click download. There's multiple download buttons. That's fine. Choose one. So at the time of this video, the latest stable version is 5.6.2. So we're going to don't download that. So choose the operating system that is yours. In this case, we are Windows. By the way, Omnet++ does not support 32-bit um, anymore after 5.0. So if you have a 32-bit machine, you need to download Omnet 5.0. So we are going to click download. And you're going to save the zip. So this might take a while for you to download, depending on your internet speed. So hit pause on this video, and once it's done, come back to me. So after downloading, you're going to need to unzip the file. Now, my preference is I have a folder on my root drive called Omnet, and it holds the different versions of the IDE. As I determined that I don't need the IDE anymore, I delete them. So 5.6.1 is hanging out all by their lonesome, and so it's going, I'm going to unzip 5.6.2 so you can join them. Once your file has unzipped, it's time to build the program. So there is a readme inside the files here. And this readme basically tells you to go read the documentation and read the installation guide. The documentation is under doc and you have your install guide right here. So if you are using Mac OS or Linux, I suggest to read the install guide. For Windows, you can read it, but we're gonna do it right now. So before we get started on Windows, there is a bug when building with uh, Ming, GW, and Clang. It generates the code incorrectly when you use multiple inheritance and within the world of Vanitz, we do a lot of multiple inheritance. So we need to fix that bug. So under configure.user, we're going to say edit. And right here where it says prefer clang, we're going to say no. And this will set it to use our GCC G++ compiler. So after making that change, let's build our program. So we run our Ming GW command line here and it's going to unpack the mean GW tool chain. Again, this is something that may take a while, so pause this video and come back when it's done. Okay, so when it is completed, you'll go through all that's been extracted and you just press any key to continue. And now this is our mean GW command line. So in order to set up our ID, the first time we need to do is type configure and then make to build the libraries. And the directions are right there for you. So we're gonna type configure. Now, if you've already done this, but maybe you didn't do the changing the prefer claim to be no, that's okay. You can always reconfigure your Omnet++ installation. So you can do again, dot configure. And before you call make, you say make clean all. But right now we do dot configure and then we're going to do make. Make is going to take a while. So pause your video and come back to me when it's done. So do make and I'll see you when it's completed. All right, welcome back. So what may have felt like an hour or it might have actually been an hour, but either way, your Omnet++ environment has been built and you're ready to launch Omnet++. But before we do that, let's verify our installation. So we are going to go to CD samples, Aloha, and then we're going to run the Aloha sample. 
So this launches the Qt environment. There's different configurations that you can choose. We're just going to stick with the default. And we're just running this really quickly to see that everything's working without any immediate exceptions or errors. So we can hit run and I like to just put it on very fast so I can see that it's all running through. Everything looks good. So let's launch on that plus plus. Go back. So in order to launch on that plus plus, we type Omnet PP and this will launch the IDE. You can make a shortcut to start the IDE. You go to IDE and then there's the Omnet PP EXE. You can right click this and choose send to desktop and that will create a shortcut. And when the program is launched, you can also pin it to your start bar. So this is going to launch our Omnet Plus Plus environment. Omnet Plus Plus is a skin of Eclipse. So if you have worked with Eclipse before, this is going to look very similar. There is a workspace that you have your projects in. So in this case, um, you can set up a workspace. It can either be inside your Omnet++ Plus Plus, uh, versioned folder or you can move it outside. I prefer to just keep the workspaces unique for each version. So F Omnet++ Plus Plus in this case and then on my workspace. So this will create a brand new workspace. Maybe when you've launched yours, you saw samples. We're not going to do that. That already has preset uh, items in it. So we want to make an empty workspace. So we're making a brand new workspace and this folder will get created for you. So we click launch. Welcome to Omnet++. Plus Plus. It has been installed. This is your little welcome screen. Um, it's an empty workspace. It wants to install INET for you and put in the programming examples. We don't need that. We want our workspace to be empty. Now, if you want to install INET this way, you can. My preference is to grab INET from the GitHub repo and work with it that way. So I don't do either of these and I leave it empty. So let's go and get INET. So this page here is the INET framework that's on GitHub. You can clone or download this directly. So you can download the zip and unzip it. Or if you use Git, you can clone this and put it onto your machine. So in my case, I have this cloned and on my own machine as well. So I'm going back to my Omnet++ and what I'm going to do is I'm going to import a project. So I'm going to choose import project and it's going to be an existing project into this workspace and I select the root directory. Now, I do not put any of my projects in the workspace. I import them all and they are referenced from where they are sitting. So in the case for my INET, it is living on F in this dev folder and then it's in INET. This is the INET project. The reason I do this is because, and this is not unique to Omnet++, this is in general for Eclipse. The Eclipse workspaces over time tend to get corrupted and the best way to handle the situation is to delete the workspace. Now, because our projects are so big, moving them back and forth when you need to redo the workspace is a little bit annoying. So I leave all my projects outside of the workspace. One project's not dependent on being inside the workspace. I have all my files where I want them to be. Basically everything that is related to my development lives in the dev folder so that I don't have programs just running willy nilly all over my computer. So it's one for organization. And when you upgrade on that plus plus and you now have a new workspace for the new Omnet++ Plus Plus version, you can just import in your projects like I'm doing right now because these projects are actually referenced in 5.6.1's workspace that I have. So I'm importing in INET. So as you can see here, after you import in the INET project, if you uh, cloned the repo, which means you forked the repo and then cloned your own, you'll see here that it is saying INET master. That's because Omnet++ Plus Plus syncs with Git. And so it's gonna actually show you all the changes that you make. So after doing this, right click and build your project. This is gonna take a while. So again, pause your video and I'll see you when it's done building. All right, so 
I know it should now be finished building. It may have felt like hours. In my case, it took 21 minutes. So um, it does take a while. So trust me, just wait it out and it will build. But after it has built, let's run a sample. So INET has a couple of examples already set up for us. They also have tutorials online, which I find extremely useful. So I would suggest going through the tutorials on Omnet++, especially the TikTok tutorial if you're going to be doing networking. So we're going to look at our examples. They have tons of examples for doing different routing protocols and security measures. We're going to look at AODB. So in order to run an Omnet++ program, you have an omnet.ini. This is essentially the configuration file for your omnet project. So within this, it has a network set up. In this case, the network is AODB network. That's this .ned file. So a ned file is actually off of the ned language and ned stands for network description. So this is all around setting up your network. The NED lets users declare simple modules and then you can connect and assemble them in compounded modules. And the NED language works very similar to our object oriented programming language, which is C, C, like our C++ that we're working in here. It's hierarchical, it has interfaces, it can do inheritance, it has its packages as well. And you can connect to your C++ files. So in this case, we're this is setting up an AODB network. It utilizes something called the radio medium and the radio medium is their variable and it's calling specifically unit disk radio medium, which is INET physical layer. There's also a configurator and this configurator is the IPv4. So this network is using IPv4. And then there's scenario managers and a routing table that is used as well. So when you want to run an Omnet++ program, you can either click your run up here or you can right click and say run as Omnet++ simulation. You can also debug as well and that means you can put breakpoints in your code. But we're going to just run it. So run as Omnet++ simulation and then um, what will happen is going to let you know that it's going to create a configuration. So it's going to create a configuration named AODB. All right, so then the Qt environment launches up for your simulation. In this case, we're doing AODB, and there's all the configuration names. These actual configurations are set up in the INI. So this is your general. This applies to all configurations. Then you can make a configuration name. In this case, it's config static, and this is the specific uh, setup for config static. For config static, it has a communication range of 250 meters and then it's only talking to host one with IPv4 and you can see all the settings are changed for every single one of those configurations. All these configs are available in this drop down. So we choose the static config. Hit OK. Set up with all its host and AODV is now running. So this is just normal run. If you hit it at fast, you can see the pings that are sent through and this program will just run as normal. So this is AODB running with your INET example. So you have INET now part of your project. Let's get veins into your workspace. So this is the veins repo for GitHub. So you can see here you got your GitHub. Um, this is Solmer veins. So this is veins. You can again fork it, clone it, um, and bring it down. So then once you have downloaded veins, you want to add this project to your workspace. So again, right click, import. You're gonna to go to an existing project into your workspace and you are going to go to where you have put veins. So in my case, it is down in my dev folder. So you'll get the veins Z project. So you can finish and veins has now been imported into your workspace. Again, you want to build veins. So let's build this project. So this program will build a lot faster than INET because veins is actually a lot more lightweight than INET. So for me, this only took about 
four minutes. Let's test our INET project. Well, let's expand this and within INET, there is an examples folder as well. So this is good. We get to just run examples. So we're going to expand this examples, go into veins, and this is one example uh, that veins have. So before you can run this example, you need to have sumo. So actually within the readme, it says this, the simulation requires sumo launch and it has to be listening on the TCP sock. So you guessed it, we need to download sumo. So this is sumo. Um, this is sumo's website is sumo.sourceforge.net and you are going to download at the time of this video, the latest version is 1.3.1. So download the binaries you need, be it Windows or Linux or Mac. For me, it's Windows and we can just use the installer. So after you've downloaded Sumo, install it. So in this case on Windows, we're gonna run it and accept their license agreement and install Sumo. So Sumo is now installed. If you kept your command line open when you ran on that plus plus, you can now run Sumo from here. So you need to know the path that you have Sumo installed and you need to have the Python script and know that path. So in this case, I have Sumo launched py. This is where the Python script lives that you are going to be running when you're executing a veins project. So you are going to run Sumo launch py. In my case, this is living on f dev veins Sumo launch. So this is the Python script that veins provided us. Then you have your command v dot vb dash c and then the location for sumo.exe. So my sumo.exe lives inside a programs file and it has a space in it and I know, yeah. So now you hit this and you're going to run your program. So when it's running, it's listening on port 9999. So this is how we know that sumo is now running. If you want it to run sumo's GUI, you can and how I exited out of it was hitting control C on Windows. But if you want to run the Sumo GUI, all you need to do is change this to be GUI and this will run the Sumo GUI and it will pop up when you start executing your omelet file. So going back to our veins folder, we are going to run our veins project. This is our omelet project. Right click, run as an omelet plus plus simulation and let's launch it. So then your veins example will launch. In this case, there's a few different configurations that are available. There's the default, and then they have a beaconing and a channel switching. We're gonna run the default script. So if we run this, and then we just click run, what actually will happen, because I ran the Sumo GUI, you can also see the simulation running on the Sumo UI. You do not need to be running the Sumo UI. When I do my actual research simulations, I do not use the Sumo GUI. But if you zoom in, you can see the vehicles. So these are actually the nodes that are moving here. So this is our vein simulation with one RSU. So congratulations, you have just added INET to your workspace, veins to your workspace. They are working. You have ran a, an integration with veins with Sumo. So if you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel. In the next tutorials, I plan to teach you how to make your own Omnet++ project and have veins and INET work together.